In this video, I will show beginners in Java how to set up your program so that it will actually allow you to input in data as opposed to having your data hard coded into your code. It is aimed at beginners and while there are more complex means of doing what I am going to do at this point in time, it, it is it is an intended that you, beginners would use the, this code and then be able to make some their code a bit more dynamic. So looking at the code we have here, at the moment we have to really assign values to our variables. Okay, so we can see here on line 11 and line 12 of two integers declared x and y, one with 3 and one with 4, and line 13, we've got nz is equal to x plus y, and then on line 14 the result is z. So, if I build that, and then run it, you can see here the result is 7. Okay? Now that's all grand and fine, but supposing if we want our program to be able to be a bit more dynamic, i.e. allow users to input in values, we need to do it in, in two or three several manners. The first manner which I'm going to discuss with now is the using the scanner class, and the second manner is using JOptionPane. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just make make a few changes here. In z is e x is equal to zero, and y is equal to zero. So, and I just need to get rid of one thing here because this was actually uh, that was a legacy of an old of an old code. So what we will need is a scanner object. Scanner value n is equal to new scanner system dot n now I deleted the line there a couple of minutes a couple of seconds ago for a purpose because we know that we are going to in this case going to use the scanner class however because we don't have this, the functionality for the scanner class imported in at this point in time, it's going to show up as an error message. So there's several ways of going around that, but one of the quick ways is actually just clicking on the light bulb there at the in, at at the, at the end of the screen, just to see what are the more more common mistakes that the, that the compiler thinks this is. And you can see there the first solution that it has is add import for java.util.scanner and that is what we want so if we click on that we should see there then that up on top import java.util.scanner okay so if we scroll down here a tiny bit more now just to explain line 15 the scanner class is basically as the name suggests it's a, it's to do with data input and output but if we look here, what we have done is we set up a scanner variable, or scanner object really, should be called, value in equals to new scanner. And this is the parameter, basically, how we will grab that scanner, system.in. In other words, we're going to input it. So, what we need to do is, is this very, very quickly, is that we're going to input the value for x and a value for y and perform some mathematical operation. Okay, so first things first, I'm just going to put in a simple printout, input value for x. Now, in order to grab that value is equal to value in, in other words, our scanner object is equal to, sorry, I made a mistake there. This is just as well. We're not going to assign value in as being the value. We're going to assign it to the variable called x. So in other words, the integer x is now going to take in whatever value the scanner object gets in. So value in dot. Now, I waited for this purposely to come up because what we have here now is that value in is a scanner object. So if we use the dot operator, it will show up all the scanner class functionality. 
and these are all the specific methods or if you want to call them functions in, as in other programming languages that are available to that scanner class. We can read through the description and get the one that best suits our needs. And if we read this one here, scans the next token of the input as an int. Okay, so what it, this will actually do is whatever we input into screen next, it will as interpreted as being an integer and then we can assign it to being an integer. In other words, x being an integer will be able to store that value. So if I take that and I'm going to do the exact same for y. Okay, and end, and not make the same mistake here. Y is equal to value in that next end. Okay, now, you might think there on line 17 and 19 that you're using value in and are you overwriting. It doesn't really matter if you are or whatever. The fact of the matter is this is that it can't in this situation that I've given here that there's going to be no overwriting. X is going to grab a value from screen and then once the next printout comes, Y is going to grab its value once once the relevant value is inputted. So those two values will be inputted, they will be added there on line twenty, and then will be outputted as per line twenty one. So if I run that code and I'll just just bring this up here a tiny bit just so that people can see it. Input value for x. So we'll just say 8. Input value for y, 9. The result is 17. So that is a very, very, very simple way of doing it using the scanner class. Now, if we want to do it using the J option pane, I'll just go through that at the moment now. Unfortunately, having scanner objects and J option objects in the same class can cause trouble. So what I'm just going to do at this point in time is just comment, actually get rid of lines 15 to 19 for the moment. Okay. Now, in a similar way, what I'm going to do here is X is equal to J option pane dot. Now what J option pane is actually, I don't know if it's the swing or AWT, but it basically creates dialog boxes. So what we're actually going to do here is actually have a dialog box. And what we're going to do then is obviously use that dialog box to import our value. So I've actually made a tiny bit of a mistake here, but I'll, it's actually I've done it on purpose, obviously, to show this um, to show this at this point in time. Show input dialog box. Okay, I just need to do this one here now. Now, what I need to actually do here. Right. I just made one mistake. I had actually written it to int x initially. Unfortunately, J option pane grabs information in the form of strings. So what you have to do is, is assign it to a string and then convert that string to whatever whatever data type you need. So what I will do is is this is that I'll I'll do that now in a few minutes. Actually what I'll do now here is it here is x is equal to
Right. What line seven, 16 does is that we're going to show J option pane, show input dialog box, input your value for X. And then on line 17, what it will do then is that after being assigned to the variable of strength data type on line 16, what line 17 will do is convert that into being an integer again. So, just to grab the value of um, for y, j option pane dot show input dialog box. Do the same thing there, y is equal to All right now. The key points here are as follows is that on line 16 and on line 18, on I, I am invoking a, a J option pane object show input dialog box which will basically show a dialog box and it will allow us to input in a value for what will be either X or either Y. What happens on line 17 and 19 is it grabs that value which was assigned to A and then it converts it to being an integer. Okay, so what I'll do here is, is this is clean and build. And we'll run that. Right, input your value for x6. Okay, input your value for y. Let's just say 56. And we can see down here the result is 62, which is correct. Now, these two last methods there, sorry, these two last means, um, wrong wording there, these two last means of grabbing data from screen should make beginner programmers in Java, their, their, program, their programs a bit more dynamic. And it should allow for a bit more re realism to end up. Obviously it doesn't take the place of fully developed GUIs, but it's a step in the right direction. So what I will do later on in the week is produce one or two more videos along the same vein and hopefully one or two more advanced topics as time goes on. Okay, thank you.